the Sky News Australia studios. This is the Outsider's Guide. G'day, this is the Outsider's Guide to everything in the known universe. Issue by issue, we dissect and debate all the topics that get you fired up. So right now, here's your Outsider's Guide to Racism. Rita and James. Racism's the debate you always have. You go to the barbecue and someone starts going, oh, you can't say that, that's racist. Oh, you can't say that. And yet racism, one of the great evils in the world, in Australia, we are regarded as one of the least racist countries on the world. Yet we are constantly being accused of being racist. Rita. Well, we're not regarded as the least racist by the self-loathing Australians among us who are just so wedded to this idea that we are deeply racist and have ever been that way and ever will be. And there's this deep, deep self-loathing there at the heart of it. And as a migrant to this country, I've never understood that. I've never understood how you can be so divorced from reality and your own country. And James, I think the word racist has now lost all meaning. It's been overused and misused so much that it's lost the power it once had. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's actually so much even self-loathing, Rita, as I think that there is an absolutely uh, constructed program in certain parts of the progressive left to just call everything racist because what they're actually doing, they're not trying to call out racism. What they're trying to do is delegitimize one of the most successful nations in the world when it comes to race relations. We have a huge multicultural program, a huge immigration program that almost no other country in the world could achieve. You know, there's very few countries in the world where you could go and become a citizen, number one, and number two, within a certain period of time, just be able to refer to yourself as, a, as an Australian or as a whatever. We do that. We do that really, really well. And I've got a little bit of research for you, actually. I check this out because we have all of these bureaucracies that are devoted yeah. to <laughs> deciding how racist we are and enforcing, you know, all of our interactions because we need government bodies to, you know, help each other's feelings out. Well, the Australian Human Rights Commission, you know, we've talked a lot about hey, this yes. on Outsiders. That's a noble Section record. 18C used to be run by Tim Sutfomasane. Um, Anyway, I found out their numbers for their complaints of racism that they handled, and in fact, discrimination across the board. 2014-15, 2,388 complaints. Year 15-16, 2013, the next year, 1,939. Then they ticked back a little bit up to 2,046, and then in the most recent fiscal year, they fell back down to 2,037. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you that if you do the math, less than 1% of 1% of the Australian population has had a racial complaint that they've had to go all the way to the AHRC to have conciliated or whatever, and yet they spend millions of dollars and they are always out there pumping for more money because they want to have more ad campaigns to so tell us just how bad it is. But they're not just asking for more money, they're touting for business. They're out there actively right. encouraging Absolutely. people to make complaints. And I'd be very interested to see, even out of those few complaints, and say if you've got 2,000 in a whole year, how many of those are actually legitimate? How many of them are not misunderstandings or people being offended mm. when no offence was meant or there was no actual racial or religious discrimination? So that, I don't think that even those numbers really speak, reflect what is happening. Um, I just find that we are so blind in this country to what makes us wonderful. I shouldn't say we, because we're talking about a very loud minority who dominate the discourse. I think the great majority of Australians know that we are a tolerant, welcoming and cohesive Well, but, well I'll tell you the facts there, and yeah. I've done my research too. Oh, you've got some numbers for us, Rob. All right, let's hear it. So this was the Washington Post, of all people, so uh, obviously a bastion of uh, It's basically Dick yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's their world uh, views, uh, the map that they have of all the racist countries in the world, the least and the most. And uh, they clearly uh, spell out that the most racist countries, and Rita, this will come as no surprise to you, where in places like India, Pakistan, large chunks of the Middle East, you have 40% or more of the people are what they, Washington Post, would actually literally label as, as racist. North Africa the same. By the time you get to countries like Scandinavia, North America, South America, Britain and Australia, 
the number of actual so-called racists is below 4.9%. So there's a huge discrepancy I think there. one of the things they use for that measure, if I'm not mistaken, is Pew's research, and they do research mm. globally on attitudes. Things, they ask questions like, how comfortable would you be living next to somebody of a different race. Yeah. Now, in tolerant countries like Australia and US and Britain, the number is uh, pretty much everybody, well over 95%, are happy to live next to anybody. But in many parts of the world, you'll find an alarming percentage of the population is hostile to that idea. Just simply being a neighbour to someone of a different ethnicity is something that is not some, yeah. uh, tolerable to them. So, Rowan, Rita, this is the guide. Now, the question then I think we've got, we've got the research here that shows that actually we're not a racist country, but what do you do when, you know, you're in some social circumstance and somebody starts off with, oh, you know, that's racist or this is a racist country and, and that, what a terrible country this is. That's the key point, James, and there you therefore you have to get to the definition of what racism means and why it is now being abused as a term. And that's two, two things. The first is, what is the definition of racism? Historically, the definition of racism is that you view... Uh, uh, one group views another ethnic group as inferior. Mm. Inferior for whatever reasons, uh, a multitude of reasons. And that's it. That's racism. That's what racism is. And that led to slavery, that led to the Holocaust, that's led to all sorts of evil things throughout history. But the reality is that every culture in history has been racist at some point or other. Every tribe oh. has seen the other tribe as one that they think is inferior, and then they might gang up against another tribe, and so on. That's history. But in modern-day parlance, racism has become a political description. If you are of the right or the left or whatever it might be, one side will call you a racist for that. This is so far removed from the actual definition. How many people genuinely think in a country like Australia that another group of people are inferior for whatever reasons is losing? And then doesn't that then also tie into that whole thing which we see these days, that whole idea where we need to, you know, eliminate white privilege and turn racism around? I mean, to me, that's the really sinister part of where, of where this goes, is they say now, no, 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 no. Now we're just going to do, go racist, but in the other direction. Now you don't have a voice because you've got the wrong skin characteristics or the wrong sexuality or the wrong gender. And it doesn't just apply to white people or white males because... That same bigotry from the left exists for people of colour, minorities, women, uh, different religious uh, minorities, because if you dare think for yourself, if you don't subscribe to their warped view of the world and regurgitate what they say, they will call you a race traitor, an Uncle Tom, a, all these really racial terms that are reserved for people of colour or minorities who don't conform and aren't obedient pets for the left. So, so has... what's the immediate answer when someone at this dinner party mm. or barbecue says what you just said is racist? You have to immediately crush that and identify what it was you said that they are accusing you of being racist. And I guarantee 99 times out of 100 you will have been critical for, for the right or wrong reasons, but you'll have had a criticism or made a comment, might not even be a criticism, to do with someone who happens to be of a certain racial well, group. That's... And therefore they conflate exactly. it and say your criticism of that group... You turn it around racist. on them. So if, you're, if they're essentially saying you can't be critical of this person because they're black or whatever nationality, then that is bigotry. That is, you are saying Absolutely. you are judging them based on their skin colour. If a white person said precisely what they did, you're free to criticise them. But because they're of colour, you have to change how you treat them. And so often the term racist is thrown around these days just to shame the person, to silence them, and because they don't have an argument. And, and it's very they can't... effective. It's very effective, but also the other thing is that nine times out of ten, 99 times out of 100, when I see this, when I see it happening, especially on social media and places like that, it is not somebody of the race or group that's being offended, but it's actually generally a white left liberal who has made it their business yeah. to be offended on behalf of <laughs> other people. And I think that, yes. when that happens, you have to call it out because you're saying, hang on, how do you know? Aren't you being racist for offend being offended on somebody else's behalf? What in your experience, white savior here, <laughs> gives you the right to basically 
glom on to somebody else's experience of oppression to make yourself look good because that's the thing it always is for Absolutely. these guys making themselves uh, big them I up. Think and I, it's I, not I, just race it's also comes into the sexist argument uh, if you critical of say Elizabeth Warren or Hillary Clinton or Julia Gillard you're a sexist because as female politicians they're apparently immune from criticism but that doesn't apply to uh, female conservatives. No. Certainly Margaret yeah. Thatcher That's wasn't right. protected by yeah. that uh, rule. But, but I, think a, I think a really simple test is the mirror test. So if, so if you've said X and Y and someone says to you, no, 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 that's racist to say that, flip it on its head. So say, well, if a white person said this about a black person or if a, a brown person said this about a yellow person or a green person said it about a purple, purple person, would the same rules apply? And when they don't, which is the trick that the left always, oh, no, 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 it's different for them, they are being racist. You are not. Yes, but it is the great sort of trick that uh, I think Hannah Arendt identified, in, uh, you know, in her book *The Banality of Evil*. She said that the great trick of all the totalitarians of the left is to turn the question from what you said to what your motives were for saying it, yes. and that is the trick that they always play. They do. And beyond that, the trick that they always play now is they're not objecting to what you've said, but what they imagine you mean. Correct. So you're only responsible for what you say. You're not responsible for what others choose to misunderstand or whatever fantasies they have in your head about your belief systems. And I, and I find that just so infuriating because if you're an outspoken person, and we're all pretty outspoken <laughs> about oh. our opinions, we're pretty clear in what we think on any given issue. And then to have other people try to uh, put their own interpretations into your words and say, no, 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 that's not what they mean. There's, there's some deeper undercurrent and some sinister motive. These people are twisted in the head. Yep. You know what? Don't, you don't need to convince them. Just walk away. <laughs> yes. Life is well, too that's short. Well, that's one option. <laughs> Just walk away. But key, key to the thing is being really clear on what an accusation of racism is really doing. It's being trying to silence you, shame you, shut you up and ignore what might be a genuine opinion of yours. And it's critical that people understand precisely why they are being attacked and, and why uh, they should defend their point of view if they believe their point of view to be correct. Mm. Hmm. No, you're right. Uh, you've got to stand your ground and I think the one thing we can learn from the entire Trump phenomenon, well, there's a few things we can learn, but uh, one of the key things is do not give in. Do Correct. not try to appease people who deliberately misrepresent you, who lie, who try to conflate issues that are not related. Stand your ground. If you believe what you say, argue it rationally and... Uh, and Often, that slur of racism is, <laughs> is used when they can't actually dismantle your argument. That's so right. instead of saying, no, what you said is actually factually incorrect or there's a logical fallacy there, they'll just throw out racist, sexist, there we go. bigot. And they count on you backing down at exactly. the R word. So don't back down. That's the outsider's guide to racism.